بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مشاهدينا الكرام اهلا وسهلا بكم ومرحبا لقاؤنا اليوم مع الدكتور تبريز صديقي دكتور تبريز اهلا وسهلا يا موسو كم اي دونت وونت تو انتدروس دكتور تبريز اي ويل ليت دكتور تبريز انتدروس هيم سيلف كان يو تيل مي سمثينج اباوت يور سيلف بليز سو ماي نيم از تبريز صديقي انا من اسيستنت بروفيسور هير ات ذا يونيفرستي اوف مانيتوبا and principal investigator of neuroscience research at the Clayson Institute for Advanced Medicine at the Health Sciences Center. MashaAllah. Dr. Tabriz, how many years you are in Winnipeg? Uh, it's been just a little over four years now. Four years. And before you come here, you started in your back home country? No, I was uh, for close to eight years in, uh, in Vancouver as a postdoctoral fellow and a research associate. Uh -huh. at the University of British Columbia. You, where did you get your BSc in the beginning? Well, the BSc um, I obtained from Aligarh Muslim University. Yeah, it's back home, we can at, say. In India, and then yeah. my master's and, and PhD at uh, the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in Germany. MashaAllah. So uh, I can say multinational. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> really, the talk today about this is uh, you know that I have uh, interviewed before our fellow, the doctor who was here before, and we spoke about doctor, branches of uh, everything about doctors. But today I'm selecting you to talk with me about this because you are in the research side. Yes. And there are doctors who are academic and not going practicing in a clinic. That's it's right. In the, in the university maybe, but uh, clinics of the university or the training hospital of the university, but not like any other doctor who has a clinic outside. Right. So this is the part which I want you to talk to us about it, please. Well, I just want to clarify that that I am a, a PhD by training, uh, not an MD. Uh, so that does not make me eligible to practice medicine. Uh -huh. But but our um, um, we do fundamental research. Mm -hmm. and 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 a lot of translational research as well that that will eventually hope uh, end, end up in the clinic someday very good so the first thing i will ask what do you advise doctors in the field to do because there are doctors international in their countries and they are thinking to come so how right. what are the procedures please so procedures for for medical practice or for for research Medical practice, we spoke about Right, that right, for research. Let us talk about the research, please. Um, so, well, it depends on your, your training, um, what kind of training you've had, and then you'll have to, have to um, identify a laboratory where you could p potentially come and, and perform um, further training uh, as a postdoctoral fellow. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the important um, things to keep in mind is when you're approaching a, um, another assistant or a professor or, um, or a principal investigator to um, perform research, you have to be very particular about what you want to do. So do not send a, a generalized email with a, with a general uh, letter, but be very specific about what you're looking for. And please be well read about the professor's work because um, many of us actually receive dozens of emails every day mm -hmm. and most of them uh, go unreplied to because of the quality of emails you receive. So it's very important to frame your emails correctly to get a very professionally done CV. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're talking about research, do not send a generalized email, but be very, very specific about what you're looking for mm -hmm. um, and make sure that it is pertaining to the field of research um, that the lab that you're interested in is, is performing. Oh, so for, exa for example, I'll tell you that yes, my work is on neuroscience research, is uh, neurodevelopment, uh, brain development essentially, and understanding how, how uh, nerve cells communicate. Now I have people writing, new, writing to me from all over the world wanting to perform research in cancer, mm -hmm. which is inappropriate. I do not do cancer res research. Oh. 
So people have to be very specific about what they are, uh, applying, what they are for. applying for, right? Do not send a general email. This reminds me when people do the resume in Canada and yeah. somebody say, I have done a very, very good resume. Then he send it everywhere and do not get a job, even Absolutely. a call for an interview. That, that's, that's quite true and that's probably true um, in every field just as in, as in research that your resume or CV, uh, if you're in academic positions, it has to be a more detailed CV, but it has to be very specific and you have to tailor make your, your CV for the specific position you're applying to. Very good. So if I am a doctor, an international doctor in a university, and I'm a man who is doing research because I know the doctors has to do research to keep their positions up and up for getting from uh, down to be a professor or a dean or something. That's right. Now, I have done my resume and I went into the internet, looked into the names of the professors in the different universities and found one matching my imagination. This man works in the field which I want to work in. Yes. Right? So in this case, I have to send him first. Yes. Not to the university. No, you do not apply to university. Because you, people, you apply to the individual professor that you're interested in joining. Some people think that I have to start with the HR or the administration. And I was telling them in the engineering, I advise you pick the professor first. That's true. You, you apply. So for example, if somebody wants to come to a master's or a PhD in our department, uh, which Department of Physiology and Pathophysiology in the College of Medicine. Um, and some people tend to apply to the department. Yes. Um, but the department is powerless in giving you an admission. The department will give you an admission or, or begin the process of admission only when a professor is willing to accept you in his or her laboratory. Yes, I have this. I mean, the professor first has to accept you yes. to work with him. Yes. It's like a mutual understanding happens in the beginning. Yes, I mean, the first steps of interview is, and in my case, if somebody applies to me uh, to, to, to work in my laboratory, I do an initial assessment, uh, an initial interview based on the CV. And then I do a second round of interview, which is more specific to the research questions. Mm -hmm. But um, in between that, I actually ask uh, the individual potential student uh, or, or researcher to write for me essays um, about their research questions yeah. and, and about which I would be able to question. So essentially end up doing three rounds of interview. And if we decide that we are a good match, um, so in the third round, m not only me, but my uh, other members in my laboratory are involved in the interview process as well, because eventually the person who joins has to be a good colleague. Okay. Now we spoke about, I mean, people who want to come to do research, to be in your team. How many members in your team at the moment? Uh, I think we have at the moment about six or seven, about seven members. Yes. And total. you are researching on something special or? Uh, well, we. We work on neurodevelopment. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, we are interested in understanding how uh, nerve cell connections are formed mm -hmm. and modified by experience. Mm -hmm. And how these um, um, proteins that, that connect the nerve cells are, are actually um, the mutations in these, in these genes that encode these proteins are um, associated with a variety of neuropsychological, neuro, neurodevelopmental and, and neuropsychiatric disorders, yeah, primarily no. autism and schizophrenia. So our work is essentially, uh, from the disease angle, is more mental health, um, primarily at autism, schizophrenia. But we also beginning to look at maternal depression and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and, and some of these associated disorders. But our primary goal is autism. Oh, there's a question here. Uh, is it uh, a closed finished circuit or there are still vacancy for somebody or a me team member, maybe somebody from a country listen to us today and is willing to join the team? Well, I mean, there is always an opportunity to join. Uh, right now, 
we are kind of full uh, in, in the lab in the lab but the there's a um, the people who join the students join and and graduate so there is some uh, flux going on mm -hmm. and if there is an outstanding student who applies and um, even if there is no vacancy we can we can generate a, a place uh, so the laboratory at this point is is, is full uh, we have three graduate students uh, two research associates a few uh, undergraduate students in the lab but also um, we're going to have two um, two more graduate students joining so we're going to be a very full lab but um, there will be opportunities in the near future okay what is your advice to those people i mean who are willing to come to canada and not only in manitoba we will make it wide now Right. I mean, there is a lot of people who say that Canada is advanced and Canada is one of the best in science, in education and everything. From my part, I always say the language. Start with a good language. That is a must, yes. Yes, because I have seen a bad impression happened from some doctors who finished their academic exams and when they came to the IELTS exam, IELTS academic. I think right. they have to score four seven 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 seven. They are stuck. And it's very important to be very good in the language, because um, in science especially, you have to not you are not you are not only doing research in the laboratory, but you are also supposed to be writing your research uh, proposals. You are supposed to be writing papers. You are supposed to read and understand research, and and you are supposed to present your work. Now, having said that. There is, um, there are people without excellent English. Um, so I have students um, who are from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I have uh, uh, team members uh, from places as far as Japan, and they're not necessarily very uh, fluent in English. They're very good in their in in, in the research that they're doing. But but a, a certain modicum of of the language is required for you to be able to communicate your work to others. Very good. So that is the language is one of the things. Is there anything that you want to tell doctors who are willing to come? An advice? Well, so it's not only doctors who, I mean, those who are, are qualified doctors, but there are people who are um, students of science and um, those who have done their bachelors in science and, and masters in science. Those are the people that I'd encourage to join laboratories, um, and and they are the students, uh, the potential students who will be looked upon with more uh, favor in, in the application process. So I, I've also I've also already mentioned that um, that that you need to tailor make your application, mm -hmm. but in addition to that, it's very important to get your theoretical knowledge mm -hmm. up to date. Um, read the text very well um, in your area of re of research that you're going to apply to because some laboratories the interview process can be very rigorous mm -hmm. and and so you need to be able to perform well and and it's important to to research the lab that you're potentially planning to join because eventually you want to join a laboratory that is well funded yeah I was about to ask about the money I mean uh, I know that in the research the people who are working with the research get some money yes to live <laughs> that's true yeah. I, I knew somebody who was in the engineering and that was he was getting uh, just uh, little right yeah uh, so what about well i mean so students who join um whether the master's level or or at the phd level they get a certain uh, stipend mm -hmm. um which is which i think is it's sufficient to cover their living expenses, mm -hmm. um, but but you don't become rich with that. You you're still a student, so yeah, it's, it's just little too. Yes, uh, you you get enough money to survive, um, have a decent life, but but you cannot you cannot uh, expect to to it's become totally rich, to, to rich on that. But that's uh, that's what a student's life is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But we are support. I mean, my department we uh, we do not recruit anyone. And the laboratories, without the principal investigator um, guaranteeing the stipend. Very good. 
very good. Dr. Tabriz, I can see that almost we have covered the subject until if you have something special you need to continue or co comment or say about anything. You feel free to say anything. Well, I, I can advise uh, anyone here who is listening to, to my uh, interview here. Um, if you are interested in um, in reaching out to me and, and, and seeking any advice, I will be happy to. And I'm not always prompt with my replies to emails, but I eventually can get back to you. Um, but, but if you're going to write to me, please be very specific uh, with your questions. Um, and, and please re uh, give me your reference to this interview or give the reference of, of my friend Samir, <laughs> Samir Ahmad. Um, and then I'll be able to, to respond to you more promptly. Okay. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Davis. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.